All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are not gonna be doing a YZ video because I'm waiting on parts for the YZ. But what I've got today is a video on doing side jobs. Now I'm assuming if you clicked on this video, you may be interested in doing side jobs or you're curious on the subject. Well, I've been doing side jobs for about the past eight years. And today I wanna to kind of walk you through, I'm gonna work on this bike, but what we're gonna be doing is talking about side jobs. So I'm gonna tell you everything I learned during the eight years of doing them. I'm also gonna tell you the do's and don'ts that I figured out and what works for me. Let's go ahead and get going on this Harley. We've got a huge list to do, so might as well start start somewhere um, and let's, let's get started. So what we're gonna be doing right now is swapping out the handlebars on here. That's one thing on our list. And first thing I wanna say about side jobs is it really depends on what kind of side jobs you're doing. So are you looking to be in the automotive industry? Are you looking to be in the motorcycles? Or do you wanna do all? I do side jobs on small engines, cars, motorcycles, pretty much everything. And my first recommendation I would have is pick a niche and stick with it. So if you're interested in doing cars, I'd recommend sticking with cars. And if you're interested in doing motorcycles, I would recommend doing motorcycles. Now there's a couple things you can get away with. Let's say you're focusing on doing cars, but you wanna pick up some bikes. It's a lot better to pick up bikes when you're doing cars versus cars when you're picking up bikes. And the reason I say that is because cars re require a whole slew of expensive tools. Now, it seems like whenever you do jobs on cars, that a lot of times what will end up happening to you is as you're working on cars, it seems like, let's say one day you're doing an oil change and a tune-up and the next day you're doing uh, transmission work. Well, a lot of times what'll happen on cars is you'll need a whole bunch of special tools and they're expensive. You also need code readers for the modern cars. So the nice thing with motorcycles is the tool cost is relatively low for doing motorcycles and you don't need a humongous toolbox like this if you're interested in doing motorcycles. You do need quite a few tools, but you don't need the expensive and the special tools as much as you need on working on cars. Now I'd like to assume that if you're gonna pick up working on things on the side that you're already, you already have a tool set, but if you don't and you're looking to do this just kind of starting out fresh, uh, I recommend going to Harbor Freight and getting a cheap tool set um, one of those mechanics tool sets, the 300 piece ones, they work great for doing motorcycles and cars. Um, motorcycles more of because like I said, less tools. So let's say you've got your tool set ready and you're ready to start working on side jobs. What I recommend now is first starting with friends and family, tell them, hey, I'm working on stuff if you haven't been already and just start by, you can either start by doing stuff for free or at a discounted rate, just so you kind of get a feel of what you're doing and you can kind of see if you like doing this or not. And one of the beautiful things with starting with friends and family is you'll get your first idea of how this works. Let's say motorcycle comes in, you figure out what's wrong, you diagnose, figure it out, you order the parts, fix motorcycle, you give it back. And the beautiful thing with starting with friends and family is not only you get an idea, but if you make a mistake, friends and family are much more likely to be forgiving than some random person off the street. And if you go into this thinking that you're not gonna make mistakes, well, unfortunately you're wrong. Uh, you'll always make mistakes in mechanics. Uh, it just depends on how you handle those mistakes. So, friends and family are much more likely to be forgiving for mistakes. Hopefully there are no mistakes to be had, but sometimes it's inevitable. So a couple things I recommend thinking about as you're getting into side jobs, let's say starting with friends and family, is how the parts situation is gonna go. So are you gonna order the parts and rely on the person to give you money for the parts and your labor? Or are you gonna have the customer pay for the parts and then you put the parts on. And what I mean by this exactly is not so much as the customer buys you the parts and brings them to you, but if you ask for money up front for the parts, say, hey, I can do it, but I need, let's say $300 right now for your new handlebars. They come give you $300, you go on your way, you go buy them and what have you. So what I highly recommend is getting the money for parts and or having the person buy the parts, not necessarily going to the store because that generally means you're getting the wrong part, unfortunately. But what I do recommend is getting the money up front for the parts because in my experience, in the couple of years I've been doing, or the eight years I've been doing it, <clears throat> I've been burned a couple of times and I'll tell you what, it's not fun, especially when you're just starting and you have no, uh, you don't have extra money to spend or even if you're long-term, you don't have much money to spend. I highly recommend having the customer give you money first, at least. So if you do get screwed on your labor, you're not out on parts. Parts are definitely one of those things you can get burned on easy. Uh, it seems to be easier to get burned on your labor, depending on who you're working with. And this brings me into my next 
point, which is when you start get going, be conscious of who you're working with. It's important to figure out how much you'd like to charge. Now, if you're doing this on the side, my theory on this is you are not a shop necessarily, even though you may just have just as much experience or even more experience at a shop, but you do not have the overhead and the business fees like a normal shop does. So there's an incentive to come to you, and that incentive being is that you'll be a little bit cheaper than the other guys. And it doesn't mean do worse work, but if you're doing it in your garage, let's say, let's say you're a full-time mechanic at a shop, check out what your guys' labor rate is, take off how much, however much you want. You could either do the full labor rate, if you're willing, but to get a little bit more people, uh, to give a little more incentive to come in the door and build a customer base, it's important to just be a little bit under uh, since you don't have those overhead fees. I'm not saying sell yourself short. I've done that quite a bit and that's a point I'll get into, but it's uh, important to just stay a little bit under that way you bring some customers in. So I wanna take a break from telling you kinda how to start up and I wanna roll into that last point I just had just about something I've learned in doing side jobs. So one thing that's extremely important is being conscious of who you surround yourself with. And my reasoning for this is the same reason I just explained with being cheaper. What happens when you are cheaper is there's a possibility that you get surrounded with uh, less than desirable customers, I may say. And these are people that are gonna be trying to take advantage of you. Uh, these are gonna be people that are trying to get stuff done for free. And people that are kinda telling all their friends, hey, you'll do this for free, kinda you know, taking advantage of you. And you wanna stay far away from this as possible. The first time you notice this, what I recommend is either putting your foot down right away or not dealing with that customer anymore because this is from personal experience and it's still unfortunately something I deal with to this day. Uh, it's You wanna have a very strong standing, just like a standard business would, on people that are trying to take advantage of you. There is definitely room to be nice and do people favor, favors, but there's not room to be doing people favors all the time. I pulled those bars off and now what I gotta do is label all these connectors and make a diagram for them because I gotta depin these to get the wires to the bars. So I just named a big con about side jobs. And what I wanna do now is name a huge pro about side jobs. And that pro being that, well, there's a lot of pros, but one major pro is that the extra income you can bring in. The extra income that I brought in on side jobs has saved me many, many of times in the past. And the extra income on side jobs is also the reason I'm able to build that 2001 YZ. Without side jobs, I would not be able to afford that build, but I've been funding that build by doing side jobs. Now it depends on how much you wanna do and how much you wanna charge. Uh, if you only wanna do one a month, that's up to you. You know, that's it's all your it's all your call. It's how much you how much you want to do, how much you want to make doing it. But depending on what you set your labor rate at, uh, the money coming in can be absolutely amazing. It is a big help being able to have another source of income, and it's very important to uh, not be relying on one source of income. Just in case something happens, you never know. Uh, sometimes. You know, business can, businesses can shut down or like I said, maybe an unexpected bill comes up that you don't have the money for or a dirt bike bill. Another super nice bonus about doing side jobs is it will teach you if you're interested in getting into business yourself, it will teach you a whole lot about the process of business. Not quite everything, but it'll help you out on the repairs end, how to handle repairs and also the customer end quite a bit. Uh, it's very beneficial to have some experience before jumping in and side jobs can be a great way to, to gain that experience. Just uh, dealing with the ups, downs, you know, the in-betweens of business, side jobs are a wonderful way to kind of get you mentally prepared for that. So at this point now, I have built quite a big customer base and I've done that. One of the reasons I do have that is because A, I have been doing it for a long time and word of mouth gets around and you make sure, like I said, make sure you make your repairs super reliable, just as good, if not better than the shop, and you will have customers. Uh, make sure your prices aren't outrageous, and do honest work. It's very hard nowadays to find honest work anymore. If you're one person doing honest work in their garage, people are gonna really respect that and they'll come to you. All right, so let's say that you did all the things and you've got your first customer, let's say not friends or family, and you're ready to do your first side job. So what do you do? Well. 
I'm gonna be focusing on motorcycles here, let's say. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to communicate with whoever you're working with on how the motorcycle is gonna to get to you. Now, are you gonna be traveling? That's a whole different story, but let's say you're doing this stuff in your own garage. You're gonna communicate how the motorcycle is gonna to get to you. Are you either gonna pick it up uh, for an extra fee or are you gonna have it dropped off? Now, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, the biggest pro to having the motorcycle dropped off is it gives you more time to do other things you need to do. Uh, the only con to that is that if you're working out of your house, then people know where you live, which usually isn't problematic, but it could be for some safety reasons. So entirely up to do what you entirely up to you what you choose to do. Uh, let's just say you pick up the motorcycle and you charge an extra charge for picking it up because we all know gas is quite expensive nowadays and most likely you're going to be either driving a truck or pulling a trailer to get this motorcycle. So you grab it, you get back, what's the first thing you do? Well the first thing you're going to want to do is confirm the issue by looking it over and diagnosing it. And you figure out what the bike needs. Let's say it's, let's say it's a dirt bike that's a two-stroke dirt bike that's running rough, um, and you figure out that it needs the carburetor cleaned. So the first thing you do is confirm the problem by uh, testing it out, making sure that the problem happens for you, and then you want to look for the condition. Basically, the four C's here: cause, condition, correction, and confirmation is basically what you want. The four C's. So you figured out the condition, which is, let's say, running rough. The cause, you just figured out is a dirty carburetor. What you're gonna wanna do now, and I recommend doing this before you tear into it, is give the customer a call or a text, whatever, which one ever they prefer, and say, hey, you got a clogged up carburetor, it'll be X to fix it. So this is the important part. This is, after you get it in, you get it fixed, what do you do now? Well, you've got it sitting there, and now it's time to get some payment for it. This is the fun part because I'm a pretty socially awkward person and I've had a very difficult time sometimes telling people how much something's gonna cost, which has ended up screwing me. <laughs> so what I highly recommend is have your price, make sure you're not too outrageous, make sure you're not selling yourself short or you're just charging way too much and when you call or text a person, just say, hey, it's going to be this much and be confident about it. Because one thing that someone told me that's a very good businessman one day is that people expect these things to cost money. And when you kind of like feel bad for doing these things or not feel bad, feel bad's not the right word. But when you kind of feel bad at the price you set, um, that'll just lead you to get taken advantage of. So fully expect when they're getting that phone call that they're going to be expecting you to say a number and yeah it's awesome for them if you know you're under what they expected but just make sure you're you're making it's worth your time and you're making the customer very happy and you'll have a a constant flow of customers for your side job business in no time. Got those bars all wired up, got them on now. They're looking pretty nice, not too bad. So I've got a list here that I made up on my phone on the pros and cons that I just wanna go over. So, so I've already talked about this one before, but one big, huge, massive pro about side jobs is the extra income. That is mainly why people get into doing side jobs. Uh, it's personally, I got into doing side jobs for the extra income and also uh, I just, I love doing it. So usually those two go hand in hand if someone loves doing it and also they're looking for the extra income. So that is one huge pro. And it also rolls into the fact of not relying on a single source of income. Like I said previously, you could just, you could run into either you get laid off or something happens. I'm not worried about that with my company that I work for per se, but it is a possibility. And if you kind of, if you're working a, a job in the trades, let's say, and it's seasonal or you have seasonal employment, it's very nice to not be reliant on one source of income. Another big pro about side jobs is the extra experience you're gonna earn. So normally, let's say if you work at a, 
let's say Harley Davidson dealer, for example, and you want to work on motorcycles and you don't, you don't do many Cowies and you want to work on Kawasaki's, that is extra experience you can earn by doing side jobs. Now, you can do side jobs on, let's say if you work at a Harley dealer, you're super familiar with Harleys, you only stick to Harleys, that would be a very efficient way to do side jobs because you know you kind of got it streamlined, you know exactly what tools you'll need. Um, but if you're looking for extra experience, it is a very, very good way to earn extra experience on stuff that you usually would not work on. Now, the last product I've got on my list is the freedom to work on whatever you want and how you want to. I know I said in the beginning of this video that I would kind of stick to a niche. I do highly recommend sticking to a niche, but to have the freedom to take on any job that you please and the freedom on how to work on that job exactly how you want to is a very gratifying feeling and it kind of tests you and see how efficient you are because you're not under, let's say, a boss or anything like that. You're kind of working on your own self. So it's a very nice feeling to kind of take on and learn how to have the freedom to do things by yourself. Not that you don't usually, but I'm just saying it's very nice to kind of see how, how you act and how you go about doing things when you're completely by yourself. And a lot of this, a lot of side jobs roll into if you want to have a business of your own in the future. It's kind of like the quiz for owning a business. See how efficiently you can run side jobs and that'll translate into running a business. There's still a lot of big differences, but it does get you the core fundamentals of dealing with customers, dealing with how to diagnose and repair properly, customer satisfaction, customer dissatisfaction, dealing with that stuff. It kind of helps you get the early starts of everything that you're gonna to need to know if you do wanna have a business or if you don't wanna have a business, you're just doing side jobs, no big deal. But if you do wanna have a business, it's super helpful. I went ahead and I've talked about all the pros and it may seem awesome, but I do wanna warn some of you guys that have never done this and you're looking to get into it that there are cons and there's quite a few of them. So the first con that I've got, and this is something that I personally struggle with quite often, and it is, it's hard to find a good work to life balance when you're doing side jobs. Because if you're doing side jobs from your home, in your garage, and you've got a, let's say a difficult job to diagnose, that's gonna kind of stick with you. And the fact that you are home means that you're more likely to spend more time out in your garage trying to fix this problem and you can't just kind of get away from the issue and it'll start to feel like you're always in your garage and that is a recipe for getting burnt out and you don't want to do that. So I just want to warn you guys that the work-life balance does become a little bit difficult and it does change things when the work is at your house. Another fairly large con to doing side jobs, which this one is quite dangerous, is that if you're working on someone's equipment, motorcycle, car, whatever it may be, that all liability does fall on you and it can end up screwing you. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind. Know that liability may end up on you and there could be uh, a time where it ends up not going in your favor doing a job for someone and you either get bit or worst case scenario, maybe something legal gets involved, which is not what you want, but it is a possibility. Some people can be very sue happy and uh, it's not something that you want to be dealing with. So I want to let you guys know that that is a possibility. So for the final con I've got, it would be that you can add additional stresses into your life that you usually would not have. So what I mean by that is the stresses that you would find at work with productivity, getting stuff done, not getting overwhelmed. You could also travel, uh, you could also bring home with you if you overwhelm and overload yourself. So this is a problem that is easily avoidable, but sometimes it does happen. Let's say you're doing a brake job that should take an hour, a bolt snaps and now it turns into a four hour job. So that can add additional stresses to your life that you usually wouldn't have at home when you're supposed to be home, relaxing, decompressing, whatever. So that's one other thing to keep in mind that you can have additional stresses and it is avoidable, but sometimes it's inevitable. So I hope you guys like this video. If it, if it helped you out on side jobs, please leave a like. That would be absolutely amazing. And if you're on the fence about doing side jobs, don't let my cons deter you from doing it. I do highly recommend trying at least one or two side jobs and see how you like it. And if you do notice some negatives and you're not liking, you're not enjoying it, then make your decision there. But my problems aren't going to be in everyone's side jobs. Um, and the problems I have are not gonna be the same for everyone. And these are some things I wish I would've known when I started, both positive and negative. So I couldn't find a video out there like this, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a diagnostic and repair type video on this Harley, 
or if I was going to do a side job style video. So I went with the side jobs just because there was no other video like it I could find and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing another YZ episode real soon here. I've just been waiting for parts on the wheels forever and I'm kind of stuck right now. That's kind of where I'm at. I got to put the wheels on it and I've got another video planned which is a little two-stroke dirt bike that will be a super fun video. I think I can't wait to make it. Um, it's not mine, it is a side job, but that will be a diagnostic and repair type video. So that should be a lot of fun. I think you guys will enjoy that video. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the YZ, any other thing I'm talking about. And I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video.